What's sure. the hardest challenge you've had, um, the most difficult challenge you've had uh, working with the CRO and how did you manage that? Yeah, so I, I would say going into a new region um, globally that mm -hmm. we hadn't done something before, you know, as a smaller region, we had a partnership that we were looking at that was really important for the business and a desire to do a trial there. And so, um, you know, we didn't know any sites, we didn't know any CROs, uh, it was a new endeavor for us. And so, you know, we went there and we spent the time to invest in meeting the sites, meeting the CRO, making sure it was gonna be a good fit before we made a decision to proceed. And, you know, really again, trying to build that relationship early on, you know, before, you know, starting the project to invest that time so that, you know, we could have, you know, some transparency and trust that we were talking about are so important. And I think the only way you get those things is really investing your time up front with the team that you're gonna be working with and building that relationship early. And so, you know, I, I think, you know, it was a learning experience for us and that, you know, going over and spending the time and investing with them helped us identify some issues that I don't think either one of us saw as, as potential hurdles early on. And so we could prevent that once we got the project started. One thing that's really frustrating for me is COVID because I, I would like to spend I so INC Research used to have this thing called um, Quick Start Camp, and they'd make you go to their offices and you'd sit around for a week and you would work through everything, data management plan, monitoring plan, project management plan, risk management plan. And literally at the end, you would light up a little thing and you'd have s'mores. And it was like, oh, do I really have to do this? But their CEO said, you know, why are our studies falling off the rails? They're like, well, we just never got the communication plan finished or we didn't get this finished. He's like, no, 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 you start every study and that's the first thing you do is you make sure you're aligned and that's how Quick Start Camp started. Um, so I think that's the hard part is just, you know, I would, I would love to, uh, I'd love to have face-to-face -face meetings. You know, I, I can't go to my, my site initiation visit in the UK, I don't feel comfortable. Um, and they're having a spike, it's in Manchester. So um, I think that becomes a little bit more of a challenge um, as far as building that relationship. Because to me, I think that's one thing I miss my coworkers so much. I mean, I see them on Zoom all the time, but it's just being able to read their face and their, their, their body language and understand if they're stressed or if they're not understanding me, so. Right. Yeah, I mean, COVID's definitely created challenges with, you know, the virtualization of how we're doing things. I mean, we're in the same situation where, you know, our engagement with our sites for training and initiation is via Zoom. And it's certainly, you know, not as good as being on site, but, you know, it's also identified some new tools that we could leverage. And yes. we could spend one other hour talking about that. But, you know, we just kicked off a large phase three trial. And so, you know, we had that plan to launch in March and we, we had to delay and pivot, obviously, as I think you know, many people on the phone probably did as well. And we were able to get that kicked off in July and are back up and running. But you know, it's been a challenge. And I think you know, moving forward, we're going to have to think differently on how we operate. And I think this is going to be a big part of CRO selection moving forward. You know, how ready are they for virtualization and, and remote monitoring and centralized oversight models and, and really leveraging technology to be successful? And, how are we going to, you know, there's still institutions that aren't allowing outside staff to come in. And so how are we right. going to work with those institutions successfully? And, and I think those CROs that are on the front edge of this challenge and, and implementing technology and, and innovation right now are really going to be important to the future of how we conduct clinical trials. Because I think a lot of this been forced in a situation to do things virtually that we would never done before and, and think differently. And I think those CROs who can partner and help us navigate this, you know, are, are going to be the ones that are, are going to, you know, be successful long term. Hey, yeah. Can you guys hear me okay now? All right, Ed's back. Hey, I don't have to no, play Ed anymore. Apologize. We, we, right, yeah, we had you. a little glitch here. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, for news and weather. 
<laughs> yeah, just out of curiosity, keeping with this before I move on to the next question I have, but, but Tommy, these changes that we're making now because of COVID and, and the things we're doing virtually, not because we wanted to, but we were suddenly forced to, will, will we continue to do this in the, for, in the future, you think, or are we going to slowly slip back to doing things the, the way we did in the past? You know, I, I mean, personally, I think we will, you know, at the, and, and our ClinOps team, I think we've really, it forced us to take an, a, a hard look at, you know, building in these these tools to be successful and be able to launch our trials. And, and you know, where we were more conservative before and wanted to be on site and do, you know, 100% source dog verification and, and train the investigators mm -hmm. at the investigator meeting. You know, we, we haven't been able to do those things. So in order to move forward, we had to virtualize these things. I think we've learned that you can be successful in doing that. And in fact, there's a lot of efficiencies in doing that. And, you know, obviously, I think there's still high value in face-to-face -face time and building that relationship in person like, you know, Audrey was speaking to. But, you know, I think there is an avenue in between that admits this, we can leverage and get some new best practices in place and adopt these. And I mean, I think we've seen it on our clinician side doing telehealth visits where, you know, they were forced to see patients, you know, via telehealth and it's changed the way they're going to function in the future. And if we don't change with them, I think we're going to be challenged to be, you know, conducting successful trials in the future. So I think the nature of the industry is going to be pushed to a more virtual platform moving forward. And Audrey, I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier. One of the questions that we got um, from, from the registration process, and this is something I've heard many times before as well, but they said, we, we, we have four proposals from, from CROs in Australia. How do you evaluate them when they all describe the trial that we designed in different terms uh, that, that you don't even know what they're discussing or, or, or what the cost <laughs> is being attributed to? And I think you mentioned something earlier on about creating your own RFP. Would this be a situation? where where you would do that and for somebody who's never done that before and is thinking how do you create your own rfp what what advice do you have for them and and what challenges do you face when when doing that sure so i actually got that advice from um that conference uh scope in february in florida and she was a panelist and she said, I'll give you one piece of advice is create your own RFP. And I thought, oh, God, I'm a, I'm a department of one. Well, when I find the time? Well, on my summer COVID vacation, I um, created it. And I basically took a template from the large global CRO and, uh, you know, looked at everything from pharm pharmacovigilance, regulatory um, uh uh, GRDP over in, in in the EU and like everything and just and then I had a spreadsheet you know that I put it into a responsibility matrix of you know are we doing it is the CRO doing it? is someone else doing it and I honestly I'd be happy to share it with anyone who wants it it's an Excel so it's got that um, it's got a, a, like an assumptions thing so I assumed when I did the draft or the template that it would be like a global phase three study and blah 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 um, so the first tab is assumptions. The second tab is roles and responsibilities. And then the third tab is the roles and responsibilities in a budget matrix, a unit-based matrix. Um, so, you know, one monitoring visit for an SIV is $1,200, blah, 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 and then pass-throughs. Um, and what happened was I sent it out for a, a study that we're no longer doing, and you know, it was, it was, um, we needed it back so quickly that they kind of couldn't quite do what I wanted them to do. So anyone who wants it, I'm happy to send it to you. It's again, it's an Excel spreadsheet. It just has all the different functional areas, like all the different tasks, recruitment, database, SDVM, ADA, like whatever you can think about. Um, and then, um, you know, roles and responsibilities and then a unit based, um, you know, budget for that. So that would be ideal. Now, I don't know. I know it's easier for the CRO to say, mm, no, we're going to send it an R, our, our template or our whatever. Um, and, you know, our tiny little company. So do we really have the right to ask them to do that? But that that's what I'm going for. Um, so Australia or otherwise, you know, it, you do, you get back the stuff that's it could take months to try to figure it out. Um, so it's not a good answer, but I'm happy to share my template. 
Um, and then, you know, you can try to get them to comply with your, you know, say you guys fill this out. And then if you want to tell me other things about yourself, that's fine. Um, but um, I need you to do this for me so I can actually compare it. And Ed, if yeah. I can just add, oh, sorry, Absolutely. No, go ahead. I, I can just add to that. I mean, I think, you know, if you can identify what the critical elements are for your project success that are important to you, prioritize and weight those. I mean, triage those when you're, you know, when you're making a CRO selection and then have the CRO do the same. I mean, what are the risks that they identify for your project and do they align with the one you've identified? And if not, why? And have that conversation right. and then know, know what you bring to the table as a sponsor and, you know, how are you going to support this? What are the gaps that you need filled? And, and again, weight those, make it as objective as possible. Exactly. I think we're all very data driven people. And, you know, back to the earlier comment about a board member wants you to select a certain CRO that maybe you have a preferred provider that you'd rather work with, you know, make it an objective, show them the data, say, you know, here are the critical elements for success that we've identified and here's how we've weighted those. Here's where these CROs fall into play. And, and I, I think it goes to the RFP model. I think going through those exercises really help those rise to the top and see, you know, where are the areas of concern that we have that we can focus and make the best selection decision for us? Yeah, and I have a scorecard on that note. I have a scorecard that comes with it. Um, not, not doesn't go to the CRO, but it basically says, you know, you know, financial health, fit, blah, 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 um, therapeutic area expertise. I mean, we were in an area recently that was, um, well, anyway, the therapeutic expertise um, and other such things. So there's a scorecard that, that I'm happy to send to anyone who wants it. Yeah, and we're already getting requests for it. So how would you prefer to handle that when people request it? I can either give them your email or if you want to just send it to me, I could share it with them. Do you have a, a preference? You can send me a check for $5 million and then okay. I will send it to you. Just kidding. No, please just give them my email address. You can either use the pull matrix. Yeah, I would use the pull matrix one. Okay, I'm do you want to go ahead and share that? If you want to, you can go ahead and share it. Okay, it's a... I'll say it and then I'll spell it. A Rosso, sorry, A Rosso at pullmatrix.com, which is A R O S S O W at P U L M A T R I X.com. 